Hey everyone, this is Dr. Peter Hentevi. Welcome to another edition of the Hentevi Minute. In this particular Hentevi Minute, I want to focus on COVID, specifically with pediatrics, as you heard, MISC. What is MISC? Well, let's take a look. Here's your case. This is the call you're going to get. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and you have a child who has a rash. It doesn't look well. You can see the blood pressure is low. You can see the child's tachycardic, tachypnic and you know overall does not look well right so this is the pat so you're noticing the rash you're noticing red eyes you're noticing the child has a fever and immediately what may come to mind here is that this could be some type of infection now what is misc well we've known this to be something else for many years in pediatrics something called kawasaki disease now you're looking at the screen here and you can see that with kawasaki you have red eyes, but remember, those eyes do not have any discharge, red cracked lips, a red tongue, swollen hands, but the foremost features are fever and a rash. Without a fever and a rash, we're not calling this Kawasaki disease. So first, the definition of MISC. You have to be under 21 years of age, you have to have a fever, there has to be laboratory evidence of inflammation, these children are severely ill, and they have to have multi-system organ involvement. So they have cardiac issues, renal, GI, and so forth. And they have to have no alternative diagnosis, which is commonly what we found in Kawasaki. We looked for everything else and couldn't find it. And they have to have COVID positive either by PCR, by serology, which is antibodies, or they had to have had an exposure to somebody with COVID within the last four weeks. Now let's look at the common signs and symptoms of MISC. We talked about Kawasaki, it looks like that, but it also has features of toxic shock, where those children become hypotensive, they look severely ill. There's hyperinflammatory features. The inflammatory uh, system just goes haywire, you'll hear the word cytokine storm. They have altered cardiac function, oftentimes myocarditis leading to hypotension and needing things like pressors. They have abnormal clotting where their entire clotting cascade goes haywire and they oftentimes become thrombotic. And then oftentimes they'll have GI symptoms. Now this is really important to actually learn this now because we're in the midst of COVID, we're in the midst of MISC cases and in the next six to eight months, hopefully this will all be gone, but learn about what these kids will present with so that you don't miss it. Now it's important to understand these children may have never had symptoms of COVID. You can ask the family, they'll say, no, the child was never sick. That doesn't matter. These children could have been asymptomatic and still get COVID and get really sick. So if there's a history of the parent having COVID, you should know that. If there is a history of the child being exposed to somebody with COVID, you should know that because that qualifies them now for being a candidate for MISC. Another important thing is make sure we're assessing vital signs. Make sure you're making a full assessment head to toe on the child. Don't miss the skin. Don't miss the eyes. Don't miss the temperature. But more importantly, don't miss the tachycardia, the hypotension, and even do an end tidal, right? If they're septic and their end tidal is now below 25, well, that just gave you a clue that this child has a lactic acidosis and they're just trying to breathe off that CO2 and therefore they're breathing faster. So there's a lot that we can do in the field. We can alert the hospital to a potential MISC, number one. But more importantly, these children need to go to a specialty hospital, a children's hospital that has all the subspecialists there from you know, the emergency physician who's pediatric trained to infectious disease, to hematology, to ICU, GI, uh, even renal, because again, this is a multi-system issue. And oftentimes they will end up in an ICU. So. If you have the ability to get these kids to the right location the first time, I would do that. So that's been an overview of MISC. We'll be living with this for the next six to eight months more than likely. So please train on it. Send this video out to others who you think may uh, find it useful. And again, thank you for your attention. This has been Dr. Peter Antevi for another edition of the Antevi Minute.